Adventist.
Good morning, brothers and sisters. In this Mass, we pray in a special way for the frontliners, for their protection, and for the healing of the world. We also pray for the eternal repose of the souls of Maria D. Gerald, Remedios, Nicolas, Euphemia, Innocentio, Edna, and all the victims of this uh, virus. Brothers and sisters, welcome to the Eucharistic celebration on this second Sunday of Easter, the Feast of Christ, King of Divine Mercy, the boundless mercy of the risen Christ. Please all rise. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed be Jesus, the King of divine mercy. May his peace and love be with you all. And with your spirit. As mentioned already, we are celebrating the second Sunday of Easter. And um, also today, we are celebrating the Feast of Christ, the King of divine mercy. <clears throat> So let us ask the Lord to uh, provide us this divine mercy, this uh, boundless mercy, especially to one another, that we can always be ready to forgive one another, just like Jesus, with his boundless mercy, he has forgiven us. So now to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Papuri sa Diyos, Papuri sa Diyos, Papuri sa Diyos, 
Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own. 
Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated and listen to the word of God. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. All came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. was hard pressed and was falling but the Lord helped me my strength and my courage is the Lord and he has been my Savior the joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, it is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give them to the Lord for His good, His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord for His good, His love is
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in His great mercy gave us new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although you now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable, even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him, you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all rise to honor the gospel. You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are they who have not seen me, but still believe. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when, when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless... I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands and bring your hand and put it into my side and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, 
that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat, mga kapatid, lalong-lalo na yung ating mga parishioners na nasa kanya-kanyang tahanan at nakikisa sa ating selebrasyon sa pangalawang linggo ng uh, pagkabuhay ni Kristo. Itong uh, darating na linggo, this coming week, lalong pinahihigpitan ng uh, ating uh, pamahalaan ang uh, guidelines, lalong-lalo na ang uh, guidelines tungkol sa distancing. Gusto nilang i ipatupad ng uh, medyo mahigpit upang uh, mapigilan ang pag-spread ng uh, coronavirus. But brothers and sisters, yung salitang distancing was not only is not only popular today. Hindi lang popular ang salitang distancing ngayon during this coronavirus crisis. Kundi even during the time of Jesus, this word distancing was already famous. In fact, pag merong isang tao na merong sakit na incurable disease like leprosy, at that time, leprosy was incurable. Pag pumapasok sila sa city, there was, there, they have time to enter the city to beg para manghingi, manglimos. People are distancing from them. So the word distancing is not only today. Even during the time of Jesus, meron ng salitang distancing. Basta pumasok itong mga taong ito, they are many, they are living outside the wall of Jerusalem. Pag pumasok sila, oh, everyone is distancing from them. But not only the people, the ordinary people, even Peter, when Jesus was already sentenced to death and he was already carrying the cross, going to Calvary, Peter was also distancing from Jesus and his companion. Peter doesn't want to identify himself. He was really distancing. When he was asked if he is a companion of Jesus, he denied Jesus. Imagine, he denied Jesus. Peter distanced himself from Jesus and also the other disciples. Para bang, kung titingnan natin, parang si Jesus ay infected, infected ng coronavirus at that time. Today, sa ating uh, second Sunday of Easter, pinakita ni Jesus ang kanyang pagiging leader na punong-puno ng mercy, boundless mercy. Bakit nasasabi natin yun? Because yung nangyari na Peter denied him, Peter distanced himself from uh, Jesus, lahat yun na nangyari. Jesus was... Uh, in the midst of the crowd, was he was alone. He was alone in his struggle. Lahat yan. In our gospel today, nang muling nang pakita si Jesus sa kanyang mga disciples, uh, nung uh, pumasok siya sa kwartong nakasara, at nagpakita siya muli sa kanyang mga kasamahan, ang unang sinabi ni Jesus sa kanila, Peace be with you. Imagine the first na kanyang encounter with disciples, ang unang salita niya ay, Peace be with you. 
walang bahid na meron siyang uh, uh, kinikim-kim na galit doon sa kanyang mga disciples, lalo na kay Peter. Wala. Walang sign na Jesus was hurt, was offended because he was denied by by his trusted people. Wala yun. Hindi mo nakita kay Jesus. Pagpapatunay na wala siyang bitterness, wala siyang anger, hindi siya na-offend sa kanilang ginawa. He even asked Thomas, who doubted. Thomas doubted that he is alive. Sabi ni Jesus kay Thomas, Halika, Thomas, put your fingers on my wounds. Halika, hipuin mo yung aking mga sugat. Hindi siya nagalit kay Thomas na nagkaroon si Thomas ng uh, pagdududa. Instead, Jesus as a leader, He showed His unboundless, bottomless mercy and compassion. He let them feel His physical presence by giving them this compassion, patience, and understanding. Ganyan ang pinakita ni Jesus sa kanila. And after giving the sign of peace, the sign of understanding, another major na pagpapakita na really, He has nothing against them. He breathed on them. Binigyan sila ng, ng uh, Holy Spirit na sa pamagita ng uh, empowering them. At sinabi niya na who sins kung anumang kasalanan ng inyong pinatawad ay pinapatawad. He gave them the power to forgive sins. Ganun ang pinakita ni Jesus na kanyang boundless mercy sa kanyang mga tauhan. He reaffirmed His confidence on them by commissioning them to forgive sins in His name. That is Jesus, the King of mercy. Kaya po itong Sunday na ito ay diniklare ni St. John Paul II as the Divine Mercy Sunday because the gospel shows us how Jesus' boundless mercy is so great. Napakadakila ng pagmamahal ni Jesus. Kahit gaano kalaki ang ating kasalanan, hindi yon pwedeng pantayan ng kanyang boundless mercy. Walang malaking kasalanan na mas mahigit pa sa kanyang pagpapatawad at pag-unawa sa ating pagkakamali. The Feast of the Divine Mercy reminds us of the power and the limitless oceans of God's mercy. Boundless mercy, in fact, is the core message of Lent and Easter. The perfect fruit of the whole Paschal mystery of Christ's passion, death, and resurrection. Mercy is the only force strong enough. Mercy is the only force strong enough to penetrate the walls of anger, hatred, fear, pain, and resentment that we build deep in our hearts. So ang mercy lang ang makakapag-penetrate sa mga hin- uh, tinatago natin, resentment, anger, fear, or pain na nandito sa kaibuturan ng ating puso. Only mercy can penetrate our heart. So the celebration today, which is the divine mercy, is to reminds us, reminds us of the infinite mercy that Jesus is bestowing on us. Brothers and sisters, we badly need, we badly need this 
infinite divine mercy of God. As we struggle to battle against, today as we struggle to battle against this invisible enemy, which is the coronavirus. We really need this infinite mercy of God. Why? Bakit natin kailangan? Because like Thomas, many or several of our members are also doubting the power of God to heal and to save the lives of people, especially those who are affected by the coronavirus. We have so many Thomas who are doubting, who are questioning. Some people are even asking, Lord, why have you forsaken us? Lord, do we deserve this kind of, they call it punishment. There are people who are asking even this, if we deserve, Lord, do we deserve this? Ano bang ginawa namin, Lord, na ganito ang nangyayari sa amin? But God, you know, in His limitless ocean of divine mercy, Without doubt and questions, without offense, He shows His boundless mercy and love to His people. Hindi siya, nag, hindi siya nag-retaliate even if we question His power to heal. The mercy of God will, will heal. The mercy of God will heal our sinfulness, our anger, our doubts, and our arrogance. Tandaan po natin, the mercy of God will heal our doubt, our arrogance, our sinfulness. In fact, itong nangyayari ngayon, this, uh, what is happening in, not only in the Philippines, but all over the world, ang divine mercy or the limitless love of God, His mercy will bring healing not only to our not only to our selves, to our uh, sinfulness, to our physical sickness. Hindi lang yon. This uh, crisis that the coronavirus is uh, bringing havoc to all over the world will bring because of the limit unlimited or boundless love of God, will bring healing to the world in terms of our it will heal our rivers our rivers will be healed tingnan nyo because of stop lahat ng mga factories little by little the rivers will be cleaned up because walang walang production our vegetations will be healed. Yung mga forests natin will be healed because uh, illegal cutting are all stopped. Our air, the polluted air started to clean up. Our environment, our land, and most especially our earth. The land, because of this coronavirus, is also uh, this is also the moment when the land will have to rest magkakaroon ng uh, moment to rest para makapag re, ano, uh, reconstruct para makadevelop ulit siya makaregain siya ng strength and fertilizer para lalo siyang makapagbigay ng mas magandang bunga pag, pagbalik na ulit sa normal na buhay ng tao so imagine, the mercy of God, this boundless mercy of God will heal our land, our air, our rivers, our environment, and our physical sickness. Therefore, brothers and sisters, during the celebration of the divine mercy, there are four important steps that we should remember Four important steps. Una, let us ask for mercy. Humingi tayo ng patawad sa Diyos. The best way to ask for mercy is through the sacrament of confession. Second, 
Let us be merciful to one another. Saint Faustina, the one who uh, encouraged this divine mercy, said, we should uh, be merciful to our neighbors. This means that we should show good things to one another. Not because they deserve it or because we are expecting for a reward. No, but simply to follow the footsteps of our merciful Lord. So be merciful to one another. Make a lot of acts of love to one another. I was always emphasizing that in my previous homilies. That now this is the right moment when really we should make acts of charity, acts of mercy to one another. Thirdly, let us completely trust our Jesus. The Divine Mercy community, they call it, Jesus, I trust in you. That is the word. Jesus, I trust in you. If we trust Jesus, he will he himself will give us his grace and he will make us ambassadors of his mercy. Katulad ng pagbibigay uh, ni Jesus ng uh, power to his disciples to be ambassador of forgiveness when he breathed on them. Let's also be ambassador of mercy para madama ng ibang tao na there is God whose Mercy is limitless. Lastly, let us ask for healing. Let us ask the Lord for healing. Humingi tayo ng healing sa Panginoon na sana yung ating uh, sarili ay magkaroon ng healing para yung ating anger, yung ating doubt, yung ating arrogance, yung hindi marunong magpatawad na puso sa araw na ito na as we celebrate the divine mercy, matuto yung ating puso magpatawad sa ating kapwa. Amen. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this day, when we honor Jesus, the King of Divine Mercy, let us open our hearts to Him and pray with humble faith. Let our response be, Merciful Jesus, hear our prayer. Merciful Jesus, hear our prayer. For the Church and her leaders, May they be clear signs and effective instruments of God's mercy to both believers and unbelievers. Let us pray. Merciful Jesus, hear our prayer. For those who administer the sacrament of penance, may they always be worthy instruments of Christ's merciful love. Let us pray. Merciful Jesus, hear our prayer. 
For those who, like Thomas, find it hard to believe in the resurrection, may they be helped to overcome their unbelief by the witness of the Christian community. Let us pray. Merciful Jesus, hear our prayer. For all those who are afflicted by physical, psychological, or moral illness, may they always find healing and relief through the charity of all believers. Let us pray. Merciful Jesus, hear our prayer. For all the members of our parish, in imitation of the early Christians, may we remain faithful to the teaching of the apostles, actively participate in the Sunday Eucharist, and share God's blessings to us with those in need. Let us pray. Merciful Jesus, hear our prayer. Let us pray in silence for our personal intentions. Let us pray. Merciful Jesus, hear our prayer. Merciful Jesus, we thank you for the gifts of the Holy Spirit, your peace and forgiveness. May they bring us closer to you and to one another and make us instrument of your love for all our brothers and sisters, you who lived and reign forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the preparation of the gift. Brethren, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain an ending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all to load you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light, rise to eternal life and the holes of the heavenly king are thrown open to the faithful for his death is our ransom from death and in his rising the life of all has risen therefore overcome with paschal joy over land, every land every people exult in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a jewful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup We proclaim your death, O Lord Until you come again, until you Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread to all the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jesse, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we merit to be coerced to eternal life. And may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Amanamit suma sa langit ka, sambahin ang ahalan mo, mapasa amin ang kahari. Mo, suhundi ang loob mo Dito sa lupa para ng salamin Bigyan mo kami ngayon ng aming kakanin sa araw-araw at patawa Para ng pagpapagtawad namin Sa nagkakasala sa amin At huwag mo kami ipahintulot sa bukso Ang 
Sinadyamu kami sa lahat ng masama. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lived and reigned forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, peace, peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us peace. Sisters and brothers, this is Jesus the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to, to join in this Holy Supper. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above everything and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, as though you are already there. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Do not allow me to be separated from you. Amen. Horatio Imperata Almighty, ever-living God, source of all mercy and compassion, we come to you in this time of dire need and tremendous suffering. The lives of your people are beset by grave tribulation brought about by the COVID-19. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray for all health workers who are the frontliners in this fight for survival, doctors, nurses, hospital staff, and personnel who have themselves fallen under the weight of their immense duties and responsibilities in serving those who are infected with the disease. Grant them health in mind and body strength in their commitment, protection from the, the disease, and for those who have succumbed to the sickness, eternal life in your heavenly kingdom. We pray for workers who tirelessly serve the needs of the people, those in authority in keeping peace and security, and those responsible in leading us defeat this terrible scourge. Keep them strong and constant in their commitment in the midst of this difficult battle. We pray for those who have been infected by this virus, the dying and those who have died in agony and loneliness. Let their suffering be their participation in the suffering of your son. We pray lastly for the swift resolution of this sickness, for the discovery of a cure and the restoration of the normal lives of people and communities. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, and our divine healer, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Rock, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Pedro Calonsud, pray for us. Please all rise. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. The resurrection, through the resurrection of his Son, God has redeemed you and made you his children. May he fill you with joy. Amen. The risen Christ has given you lasting freedom. May you inherit his everlasting life. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has been offered. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.